Hey there, YouTube friends. Mass Bandit here again with another episode of Conifer Slopes Part Two. Part Two. I'm sitting here just watching the people go by, going up to get themselves some lemonade, some juice, and grams, homemade lemonade. Uh, what we're going to be doing today is we are going to be going next door to Grams and we'll be putting in a hot dog stall. The original Conifer Slopes had a hot dog stall in the general vicinity. Ours will be a little bit closer to the front. Um, but yeah, so strap in, relax, and get ready for that. So I will see you directly in the time lapse as we get going with that. So stay right there. See you in a minute. All right, so we're here, and we're gonna start getting, uh, we're gonna place our shop stall, our shop fronts first, and I want them to be a little bit more spaced out, and I wanted again to work on scale. I wanted the whole idea of the, I want this park to be scaled similar, uh, you know, nice and nice and small, and so we just start building. I had a sort of an idea. The original uh, hot dog building had little towers on either side of it, I think, back in Roller Coaster Tycoon 3. And so that's what the white uh, clapboard is doing up there. And I wanted an overhang, but I didn't want it to be a, uh, a roof. I didn't want it to be a standard roof overhang like Graham's. Does Graham have one? I don't even know. Like some of the other buildings do, I wanted to kind of change it up, change the style up just a little bit for this building. Um, but I decided once I got this part in here, this little overhang, I realized that the, the shape of the second story wasn't working for me. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna change that right here. There you go, see, boom. Uh, I, I like the lighter color. I like the brick mixed with the clapboard combination. That's something that I'm kind of into. So we'll see uh, if that doesn't show up more throughout the park. That's kind of the, the goal, at least. So um, so while I put the roofs down, it didn't do what I wanted to do. So more and more frequently, I'm finding the need to use custom roofs. And uh, so I go ahead and I use the beam pieces and we build ourselves a little custom roof. And looking at it now, uh, there's a little gap in one of the board, between two of the boards and it's kind of noticeable. I'm probably gonna have to go in and fix that um, now that I'm looking at it. So anyway, we have this little uh, almost tower that juts out, which is kind of cool. I, I kind of like it, but at the same time, I think I'm falling into some design habits or tropes, I guess. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of towers. There's a lot of uh, steeply arched peaks like that. So I think we're gonna try and get away from that in the next few buildings here uh, in Conifer. We're also gonna try to get away from the beams because I use them a lot. So those are two things that if you're like, man, another building like this, I, I agree. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're gonna try and change things up after this building. Here I'm working on a custom sign and I'm really pleased. I've, I think I found one of my, uh, you could almost call it passions <laughs> in Planet Coaster, and that's creating custom signs and goofy names for stalls. I like tongue-in-cheek kind of names. So this was originally going to be Spot On, uh, for, oh my gosh, Frank's Spot On Hot Dogs. And so I was like, oh, that's funny because it's a target. It's Spot On. These are great hot dogs. I don't know why I came up with that, but obviously the guy's name Frank is because hot dogs. I mean, that only makes sense, right? So yeah, there's spot on, and I throw the Franks up there. But the problem that I ran into is I didn't want the split of the sign. I didn't want part of the sign on the clapboard and then part of the sign on the brick. So I said, this isn't gonna work. So I had to scooch everything down and try and reorganize it. And um, you'll see what ends up happening here is actually that sign, the, the spot sign, I don't keep it nested in there. I, I don't want to overuse. Again, I don't want, I'm, I'm falling into patterns. I'm falling into habits with uh, Conifer and Brocoaster. So I want to try and break out of some of that. So by making these signs um, visible, it totally changes the look of the sign. And the, you might think the yellow and red is kind of garish, but it was intentional. I wanted that to kind of hearken to, you know, McDonald's and the other fast food establishments. There's, there's research that yellow and red, are, for whatever reason, make people hungry or something like that, which is why those McDonald's were all red and yellow. 
And they've kind of toned that back. I guess they've tried to get more um, older or more mature in their themes. But for the hot dog stand, I thought red and yellow was perfect for the sign. <coughs> We're trying to find ourselves a little window to work up there because it looked really bland without anything. So I like that the sign is lower down on this building. And I think the arrow... <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> I think the arrow is a fun little little thing to go with the sign. So, And one of my bad habits in Planet Coaster is not um, finishing. Not finishing buildings. And so I'm deciding to at least get the walls up. You'll notice there's no roof back there. But at least I've got the walls on. So once I've got the front of the building more or less figured out, it's time to begin um, adding the side walls. And then I realize that I need a smaller building here. In the original Conifer Slopes, there is a smaller building there. And that little roof piece, the very first little piece of trim you saw me plop down, that's what unlocks the 16th grid. That's, you know, it's tiny. And it allows a lot more flexibility and variety to your building shape. So if you're looking for that, that's that piece. So it's a tiny little trim piece, roof trim. Uh, and it'll unlock, just like before they introduced the half grid, there were a couple pieces that when you plopped them, they would unlock that half grid. Same thing here. Same thing here. So anyway, this guest relations building, it's a facade. It's, it's non-functional. It's, it's, we're going to use have a, uh, our imaginations to, uh, you know, pretend that there's actually stuff going on in there. My assumption is that's where you would go to, f you know, get your season passes and make any sort of reservations if you had to or something. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. That's my thought. Um, I'm using those trims those wall trims as kind of covers for the corners one thing i hate is <coughs> little exposed cor missing corner pieces i wish there were little corner pieces that you could use but those bricks they work just fine uh the windows on this are a little over decorated but i kind of like it. it it's it's supposed to i think next to grams having this little kind of fantasy window on this tiny little shack i don't know it seemed to work for me I thought it was okay. So we, we rolled with it. And uh, just finishing up the side of this building now. I don't know what that pause was about. Let's get that going. Uh, trying to figure out exactly what I want that roof to do. Exactly where I want it to go. Here, there you go. You can see the back of Grams is totally open. We'll, we'll need to fix that up. I, that won't be on camera, though. I'll fix that up on my own. Um, just getting everything settled here. Getting that building to... Finally, to be finished. That one is actually, I think, finished. I think I added, did I add a back to it? No, I don't think I even added a back to this building. What is up? Here's where I realize I'm overusing those um, beams. And so I go with the simpler, narrower beams. And it actually fits much better on this little, little building. And again, the little w windows to mirror the bigger ones in front. And I thought we needed something else. So I'm trying, first time really playing with chimneys. So as chimneys, I've used them for other things, but actually trying to put a chimney in. I was like, okay, where would this go and how high would it have to be and blah, 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 blah. Playing with the, the smoke particle effects. That might be the very first particle effect I've ever plopped. And it's just smoke for, <laughs> for the chimney. And now a struggle I had was placing. I didn't know where I wanted these buildings and I didn't really want to fiddle with the paths too much because paths are kind of a pain to fiddle with. Like once you plop them and you start building around them, you're more or less stuck because I haven't found a way to not delete giant pieces. So once we get the, the buildings in place, I thought I would try my hand at a um, uh, condiment bar. And I built it on this side because I had just a little bit of room and I needed something. And uh, what I wanted to do is I wanted to make ketchup, mustard, and relish dispensers, since it is a hot dog stand. So I'm looking for all different pieces that I can use to kind of spruce this up, because I, I wanted to do a little bit better job of showing what it was, you know, without having to explain to everyone, oh, this is a condiment stand. So there's your ketchup, and there's your mustard, and then we'll put our relish in. And that's just pickaxes and then some Christmas ornaments. Um, nested into each other and stuff. I'm trying to find other things. If there's any other little details that you can think of that I can use, um, go ahead and suggest them in the comments. I'd like to dress that up a little bit more. So if you can come up with that, that'd be great. So once we get the details done on that side, thrown in some fences and stuff, I realized that a condiment bar there, I guess would make sense for people that were just kind of getting their hot dog and moving on. Um, but 
there's not enough room. I wanted to have a sitting area for the hot dog area. So what we do is I decide to make, I know what I'm gonna do for my corner now. Uh, just after the building was in, I thought it was a good time to throw in some trees, throw, uh, kind of fill in those planters a bit. Our tree shapes are very limited in this, and in, in I'm hoping to see more foliage in the April update. That'd be great. A couple more trees, a couple more bushes, a couple more flowers. That'd be nice. Um, some smaller, like curb side trees, I think would be nice. Because the ones we have are huge. Like, there, there's not many options. So anyway, um, on the other side of the hot dog jurnt, we are going to go ahead and build ourselves a little patio area. <clears throat> and that has to start. Oh, so we're taking the condiment stand and throwing it over there. That's how we're going to get started with this. And uh, so first thing is to, I think, well, lay it out, obviously. So what I've got there, you might have noticed where that come from. Uh, I've got a piece of wall uh, roof sunken in. And I use it at the front of the park, and it's at the perfect angle, as long as I don't do any terrain changes. <laughs> so it's actually just, there's any time I have to cover up um, a hole in a path, it's just one giant floor building. It's huge, it takes up the whole park so far. So um, as long as I can use that, I'm going to. And then what we did here is just kind of flesh, f uh, fleshing out where the patio area is gonna be, and then bordering it off with hedges instead of actual fences. And then using the beams as sort of curbs, custom curbing here, because again, the pathing and the curbing in Planet Coaster is a little wonky for me, so it just makes a little more sense for me to do it myself. And then we build ourselves um, a, a, an umbrella. A par Paris? Parasol? Par par I don't know. Umbrella. <laughs> and this was trickier than I thought, and it's not perfect. This was actually the easier version after I cut out about a 20 minutes worth of fiddling because it just wasn't getting anywhere. So once the parasails are in, you'll see there's already picnic tables put down. I don't know why that wasn't recorded, but uh, we're just gonna finish up the area. There's eh, a minute or two left of time lapse. So that's about it. This is, this is kind of gonna close off our main street section. And in the next episode, we're gonna start getting into some rides. So um, stick around for that. Hope you enjoyed, and uh, there is no after time lapse for this video. After the time lapse here, we'll go straight into some um, cinematic shots. And so uh, I'll see you for episode three. Hit that like button. Uh, if you like this, I'd, I'd appreciate that. Consider subscribing if you haven't. And be sure at the beginning of the video, uh, be sure to follow me on Twitter. There's some there's some teaser pictures and some some things drop on the Twitter page before they hit YouTube or Shy Guys World or anywhere else. So um, yeah, trying to get a little bit more social media e. And if you're into Planet Bro Coaster, Twitter is where um, there's going to be lots of announcements and other um, sneak peeks and stuff like that. So yeah, subscribe, uh, follow at Mass Bandit 102. Uh, take care, guys. Have a great week, a great day, great night, great whatever, and I will see you for the next one. Bye-bye.